Hello, I'm Karen and I'm a weekend craftaholic and today I wanted to give you a tour of my craft room which was refurbished at the end of 2017. I do have some before and after pictures which I'll show you shortly but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the room as it is now. It's quite a small room actually, not very big at all and three metres by four and a half metres I believe. Um, and as you can see I've mainly used IKEA products to decorate. I did spend a lot of time checking craft tours on YouTube to get lots of inspiration and some advice and some great ideas as well so hopefully you'll find some from looking at my craft tour. You'll see predominantly I've used the Calax shelving units at the bottom rather than the tall ones. Um, with it being such a small space I thought it would be better actually just to have everything low level. That gives me extra workspace as well. So I'm just showing you now some of the embellishments I've done at the top. And I should point out now as well that um, I spend half the room for sewing and half for paper crafting. So the left hand side of the room is predominantly sewing and quilting. This side of the room is all my paper crafts such as Project Life and making cards, that kind of thing. So um, if you are only interested in part of the video, as in just a sewing or just a paper crafts, I'll let you know when, which uh, point to pass forward to. So these are the before photos when we first moved into this house three years ago. So I'll start with the sewing space as I mentioned and I do apologise if it's a bit wobbly, I was walking around sewing. with my iPhone. Um, I'll talk you through um, so you can see I've got a dedicated cutting space shortly. which is fantastic. That now. side you're looking at now is really where I've got all my bits and bobs. The little laptop is mainly where I just look at YouTube tutorials. This shelf is all fabric storage, the bottom being the scraps um, and I've tried to organise it by fabric, fabric and also colour. So these at the top are all just uh, fat quarters effectively for quilting. These storage boxes I got from Bunnings here in Australia. I think they were $10 for 10, it was quite cheap. This is just my little um, ironing board that I can put on the top of the work surface if I do need it as I'm quilting and ironing and along. Um, and as I mentioned, this is my cutting space. This is my ribbon storage, I got that from Spotlight. And this idea here is something that I got off Pinterest actually and it's the old picture frame that I've covered with some wadding um, and I use that just to set out my patterns for quilting. I've also got my quilting rulers here as well. I don't have too many of those, just the ones I generally use and that's a bit of embroidery which is also something that I like to do. Underneath, this is probably the only part that's not organised yet, I've got all my knitting stuff here, so there's all my wool. Um, and also in the bag at the top. This is one of the few things that was left from the previous craft room um, which I do need to replace at some point and I'm just demonstrating here um, how the wadding, the fabric sticks to the wadding so it is quite easy to actually um, just rearrange until you get the set of nine that you like and so on. So I do plan at some point to replace the storage at the bottom. At the moment it's just used for all my pre-cut squares or stripes um, or jello rolls um, and that's pretty much it at the bottom. Uh, that's also where I've got a, a spur sewing machine that I don't use very often and um, my iron as well which I would obviously take out and leave it on top. This little Otto holder I got from Office Works, which was great, it was only about $8 and it holds all my um, cutters and scoring board um, and as I said this is just where I can watch YouTube tutorials as I go along as well. I keep all my frequently used things in the little tub um, and the serger or overlock locker I should say and sew machine just stay in that corner of the desk so the desk is two meters long and that's my view. 
These river ideas I got from Pinterest actually, so all of the offcuts of ribbon I just keep wrapped around little pegs in the storage jars and they're nice to get hold of if ever I need something really for the paper crafts. And this jar is just full of little scraps as well, which I might use. And you can see my knitting needles. And then this is this is just for decoration because it is quite high. Um, these shelving units as well were from Ikea. Um, and again, I keep my frequently used stuff on the shelf. So here I've got my quilting clips. Um, these are just the binding uh, for make bias binding yourself, uh, which I'm sure you'd be familiar with. And then these are just some little jars that I got from the local um, textile traders store. Quite cheap, just to keep my buttons. This thread holder um, was some, somebody made that for me, which I'm very grateful. Again, I saw the idea on Pinterest and it's great to have the spools with the thread. And it keeps it nice and light at the top as well. I blue tack the tools I use more often, so it's just for, for snipping along. And um, I can just grab those as I need to. I've got my fabric scissors. I've got my little measurer here and also tweezers for the machine and obviously my uh, seam ripper gets a lot of use as well. So it's just good to keep those on hand as I need them. And there is an erasable pen which I also use for fabric as well. A little paintbrush for keeping the overlocker clean. Um, so I'm sure if you're a sewer these are tools that you use quite frequently yourselves. So I'm just going to show you through each of the drawers now as best I can. So these are just the um, bits and bobs that I like to keep handy, more erasable or friction pens, which are great. Um, it's my walking foot, um, that's not in the set. And I'm just removing that drawer now because this is the actual set of walking feet that I got from eBay, which was an absolute bag and $30. Um, and that's one of my projects actually for this year is to try and learn how to use the different feet because I am a beginner seller. Some more bits and bobs. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of this tool now and I can't remember, but basically it's the snips. I think it's the cam snips um, to, uh, to make little poppers with. Um, the front plastic tray here is full of my patterns, which are really just freebies from magazines. I haven't bought any patterns as such. I'm, I've not managed to successfully create anything from a pattern yet, so I'm working towards that. Um, and at the back you saw my wadding in that previous previous bin. So this bin really is on my cross stitch and embroidery thread. I do keep it in the little bag that I got from Spotlight. It's really handy for um, taking into the front room so I can watch TV as I stitch. Um, but it all gets kept in the same place there as well. And then these top drawers. Um, I've got some fabric markers, some iron-on tape. That's by spanning that off spot from the store as well as some zippers there at the back. Um, and these are my hem guides. I don't know if you've, you've seen these before on Pinterest, but they are really great. Um, so if you're burning your fingers when you're ironing, you can fold over the fabric onto those. Um, and obviously, don't laminate them, but um, thick card is ideal. And those are just some little sewing kits that I've been collecting when I've been to stay at various hotels. Top drawer is more of a cleaning drawer than a sewing drawer, so that's just my nice little duster that I use because it does get quite dusty very easily. Um, just some hand creams, um, baby wipes, um, yeah, and I've got the gloves as well there for if there's any end, um, mixed media work that I may do. This has got just some leftover thread that I don't really use. At the back um, are all the sewing magazines and the books that I've got at the bottom. So you'll see on the magazines I've got little red dots. Um, and there's corresponding red dots on the patterns as well, so I can easily find them. Um, this is a sewing planner that I got from Colette, which I absolutely love, but um, not managed to get much use out of yet. I'm going to wait till I'm a bit more experienced. This little tub is just full of various elastics. And in the rest of the drawer, it's um, felt material um, and the merino felt as well at the back that I've got there as well. And I, and I love it. So again, don't use much of that now. Um, but it keeps it all in one space. So I've got plenty of storage space for my sewing equipment as I don't have too much um, sewing uh, going on. Um, I like to have the separate cutting space, that's really handy and I do like to keep that other area top clean. So now I'm going to start talking about the other side of the room. Um, I was just showing at the bottom, that's just where our little dog sits when he joins me. 
um, I do keep these hung up. Um, I don't have a heat gun yet, so I've been using an old hairdryer for embossing, and that's my fuse tool. Um, so it's good to keep those up at the bottom. It does look messy with the wires, but at least all I need to do is lean over the top and plug them in. So I've got a couple of these tubs. These I think are only about four dollars from Kmart, um, and they're a perfect size to keep Project Life or journaling cards in there. So. Um, I keep them in there so they're nice and handy. I've got little um, pockets as well to put uh, photos in before I get to use them. This bin is full of my stickers, my alphas. Um, so you can, again, I don't have too much. I don't want to be a hoarder. I don't want to have a storage issue like I did previously. Um, this is just uh, my incense holder, so I like to put that on when I craft. This little unit, by the way, was also from Kmart. I think it was about $15. And as you can see at the top here, I've got some um, sentiments in here that I can use for card making and project life. And at the side of that was um, a ream of A3 paper as well, which is handy for putting on the desk if I'm doing any stamping and so on, just to try and protect it as best that I can. So it fits nicely under the desk. Um, this is the other tub that I mentioned um, that I've got all the journal cards in and I really do, I've got, although I've got dividers um, on my list of things to do really is a, a better way of organising those as well. Um, although they're in the kits, um, I should really have started to keep a note of the kit name so I know which I've got. This bottom tub um, is embellishments as you can see um, and I got these little split rings um, from Daisio when I was over in Sydney so we don't have one in her. Um, and they're really handy to, I think it was $2 for 11 of them, so really handy to keep um, similar products together, like the hearts or the fairies and so on, and I can just pick them up um, and put them on the desk when I need to use them. I don't use a lot of them now, they were mainly stuff that I collected in the beginning. Now I did have one of the uh, Rascog units, um, but that didn't fit in the deck, so I'll, I'll show you the trolley that I do have later, which is also an Ikea one, isn't it? $15, so a lot, a lot cheaper. Um, the little green bins were Kmart as well. Um, and you see these are slightly longer ones from Kmart than the previous, and this is where I keep the die cuts as well. And again, I'm looking for a storage solution for these just to make them easier to flick through and choose. This one I've got use of the split rings again. So these are more um, enamel dots, picker stickers, that kind of thing. And this one is just where I keep all the different bling as well. So I just generally pull this trolley out when I start to craft. Um, this middle section in the green box is a red card. So this is just full of blanks that I've got. Um, and um, also the ones that I've completed as well. So again, they probably need to be organised a little bit more um, when I've got the time to do that. The top is some cardstock. Um, just a little um, small kits that you get which I'm trying to get more into um, I did start with the 12 by 12s but again from a storage point of view I, I find these smaller ones are a lot easier to use and then these at the end are just actually um, colour charts that you can get from any DIY store and I keep those mainly for if children around and want to do some crafting these are all my gift tags um, these are all just random embellishments or cut downs that I've got um, as well as some little sequin kits as well that I've started to collect on this wall is just a little, that's just a little decoration that I got from Typo and again these shelves and jars are from Ikea. Um, I've started to put sequins in these. Um, not a big fan of sequins but I need somewhere to store them that look good. Um, so they're the, mainly for the decoration purposes. And then this is the glitter as well. And again these are things that I'd got uh, before starting my craft room. This set of three paper trays um, were from Kiki K um, and at the bottom I've just got my old selfie printer, coloured paper in the middle and as you can see just my um, label machine at the top. These magazine racks were also Ikea and this is where I tend to keep more speciality cards as you can see it's just the vellum, uh, laminating pouches, um, thick card stock uh, and printed ones as well. And at the bottom I've got my plastic folders which I tend to cut down and use. So that again, a, another good way of keeping it out of the way um, while also looking uh, quite nice on the wall. So I'll talk you through some of the bins on this side as well. 
Um, but again, this is a great area for if there's two of us in the room, we can use one desk each. I generally pull this out onto the desk. It's got all the frequently used things that I need, such as um, uh, that's my touch of Stella, scissors, um, bone embellishment. I've got all my metallic pens in there as well, um, as well as obviously a glue stick in there too. These are a, a um, couple of magazine racks from Kmart, which is where I also got the, the holders from. Um, so I keep all um, just photos and things at the front, as well as some uh, post-it notes. Um, and at the back I've just got various pencils and pens. Um, some of them are Sharpies and whiteboard markers as well. Um, but again, makes it easy just to pull them out as and when I need them. And this little cube from Kmart, which is great for eight dollars, um, has got all my planning stuff at the same time. So this is my planner, which you'll see I've got a YouTube video for. These are all my um, traveller notebook inserts. So these are actually just ones I've made myself. I haven't got um, an actual traveller's notebook cover itself. So, but having fun with the inserts for now. Got a couple of planners in there as well, and then just stationery that goes with that. So moving on to the pegboard. Um, this is just uh, some dies that I've got um, for the diamond press here that, um, that I got from Spotlight. Don't have too many of those. I haven't done quite much uh, die cutting at the moment, um, but I am hoping to get into a little bit more of that. Um, so again, on here, it's stuff that I can reach and I can see when I'm making a choice. It's easy enough to grab what I need with various pens, my washi tapes um, and some twine. I've got my liquid pearls there as well, just a few in bed. Um, embossing tools and, and some misty sprays. Um, I've got my We Are Memory Keepers stamp block as well, which is great. I use that quite a lot. So my first drawer here is just inks and the ink pads. Um, again, as I know I keep saying, I've probably not got half as much stock as many of you white crackers like that have. And it's not something I want to uh, expand into, but these are just um, basic ones that I can use over and over again. This scrubber pad. Um, I saw that on a YouTube video, and it's brilliant for keeping the stamp pads, the acrylic stamps, nice and clean. Um, this is just a bit of a random draw with punches in there and some extra embellishments um, and some calligraphy pens as well. So my thought process: if the drawer gets full, doesn't fit in the drawer, then no more spend. That said, you will see that I do have a little bit more space to grow here if I do come across a new hobby. Um, so at the moment, this is just the Project Life folder I'm working on for this year. I've got a glue gun, got a laminator down there. Uh, just a folder that I've not got a use for yet. I was thinking it may be good for the die cuts. That's just um, random paint brushes that are stuck in there as well. Um, so yes, I intend not to expand too much. I don't want the room to be claustrophobic and be surrounded with too much st stock. Um, these are my 12 by 12s you'll see I've labelled them as well, just in the colour theme, so my idea is on the scraps to put in here. Um, but actually what I'm finding, and I should mention, that's just my Christmas stuff as well, so you can see not, not an awful lot of stock, which is great. I'd rather use it and then purchase new. This is a drawer full of paints, um, different types of paints with the acrylics and the pastels and the water, uh, which I don't use very often. Um, and the dry is messy and it does get on my nerves quite a bit. Uh, this is just adhesives, so with my tape runners and so on, and craft glue, um, that kind of thing. Again, it's it's getting really full. I don't want to pur purchase anything else until that gets used. This is an empty bin, really. It's just got some extra storage boxes in there. And, uh, and obviously, if I do need extra storage, I can use that space. This is a little fridge bin that I've seen a lot of people in America use and I've been using the same storage ideas as well for the for storing uh, the acrylic stamps. Um, but as you can see, the collection's quite small so I've got an awful lot of room for expansion here which is great. If I ever get to the same stage with die cuts then I can use the shelf above to put the uh, die cuts on as well and have a similar system with the double sided fridge bins. But for now I'm just using the other side for the wooden stamps. This is my little um, scrap jar, so, and then this actually is just full of random things that arrive from Studio Calico, like pin badges and, and so on, which I really have no idea what I can do with those, to be honest. So I just stick them in there to keep them all together. 
This little drawer, again, it's probably more planner related. I've got some picture frames, some old albums that I'm working on and some books. There's a lot of um, planner inserts at the back in those little folders, um, as well as um, my bullet journal there at the front as well um, that I'm still using. This again is Ikea storage um, and the shelves weren't actually as deep as I thought they were so what I've done is uh, definitely made it, um, a conscious decision not to buy any more 12 by 12 pads just because of the amount of storage space they do take. I've tried various ways doing it horizontal, vertical, having them all together. Much easier to separate them out and easier to flip through whenever you're looking at um, a particular sheet that you want to use. And then I've realised here that I didn't actually show you these bins at the beginning. And these are the ones that I don't use very much at all, which is why the little um, poly stays there. That top bin was full of jewellery making um, stuff, which I did a while back. That one's just full of bubble wrap, um, tissue paper, that kind of thing. A lot of this stuff in here is the Kaiser Crafts, so um, wooden embellishments, that kind of thing. Um, work in progress as well on stuck in there and this is basic office supplies as well just because I'm, I'm not sure where else to put it but again if I need to expand I can use that space so you'll see I've got quite a bit of space that I can um, expand into the other options I've got I could also put some legs on top of the calyx unit as well um, and then that would um, enable me to use the underneath as storage which I have seen on YouTube so that's always another option so I hope you've enjoyed my YouTube video um, I've enjoyed showing you around 